interesting. OD has been not the most successful hero, it feels like. Did get a pretty solid re uh, rework, though. He's, that hero is always being reworked. Well, they re first off, they renamed him to the Outworld Destroyer instead of the Devourer, so he's back to the old name. Yeah, I pulled up the patch notes because I realized I didn't remember what his changes were. This is like three paragraphs long, just like his ultimate. I can't read all of this. Yeah. All right, they took the Brewmaster, though. So this hero got some pretty big reworks. I'm a big fan. Uh, you've heard me go off about Brewmaster a number of times. He gets a fourth panda now. And uh, it's about time. They also buffed up his uh, Brewlings. He's, this hero, I think his ultimate was very outdated. It's been a while since they changed it around. There's been a slow power creep over the years in Dota. Everybody's gotten, uh, like, their stack growth rates have been increased. Their armor has been increased. Items are stronger than they, they were before. Everybody has more passive gold. So the Brewmaster Brewlings don't scale into late game nearly as well, but they finally buffed them up. So I feel like uh, he's on par, if not, uh, his potential would be a little bit stronger than them now, finally. And uh, again, you, you turn into the uh, you use your split, which has two charges now, everybody. That's right, two split. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah, the Air Panda, a Storm, he still has the Dispel Magic, which has damage to summon units. It actually damages the Necronomicon and everything in Beastmaster's Menagerie. Fun fact. I think it's like 800 damage on a five second cooldown to summon units. As well That's as pretty dispel. good. Yeah. That's it'll pretty good. Overpower. It'll dispel Bloodlust. It'll dispel Windrun. Uh, it is absolutely insane. And because it's got two charges, you can actually reliably use it in these fights. Five seconds. I like that. I mean, I think it can. Yeah, I think you're right. Against summoned units, especially the Beastmaster ones, that should be pretty good. And also it makes it so that there's certain heroes. Like illusion heroes specifically, they can't really pick into this, right? So they they do see the the Ursa. They respond with Troll Warlord, which honestly I I don't know if Troll Warlord is the pick into the Ursa, but it is good at dealing with the be uh the Beastmaster in the lane, which is good. Ten seconds remain. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of Troll Warlord. <laughs> I've said it so many times before. I feel like uh, whenever you win a game with this hero, it's um. You win despite having Troll Warlord, not because you have Troll Warlord. Yeah. Too easy to kite him around. Uh, he gets completely owned by anybody holding a Heaven's Halberd. He can toss him in the air with Yules and kite him. Right now, I definitely prefer Thunder Predator's Draft. I don't know how they finish rounding this one off. It is Radiance Band. Kaka Band out here. I mean, they... They don't necessarily need a frontliner. I feel like Undying, Tiny, and Brewmaster can all kind of share the burden with that job. They might need more damage coming out from their backline because at the moment, um, I haven't seen the kind of damage that Brewmaster can put out with his rework, uh, but I think uh, you've kind of put all of your eggs in the Troll Warlord basket here on 5-Man Midas. Five seconds. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we see this a lot with troll, troll teams, right, where they end up... Um kind of investing a lot into the Troll Warlord and, and trying to make him have a good game. But there's, to, to me already, there's already a handful of good counters. I mean, you can build a Halberd on, on Beastmaster pretty easily. Um, has no problem going for that. Ursa, of course, uh, a pretty good hero at dealing with the Troll. The Enrage makes it very difficult for him to go down. Turn to ban. They ban Pugna and TA out of the mid lane. Pugna would have been great. A lot of tower push that could have come out. Um, they're worried about TA as well. And I think... You know, rightfully so. You can still run Leo style in the mid lane on this Wind Ranger. They have ultimate last pick, so they should be able to set up their lanes for success here. Yeah, there's also the huge Ten kiting potential that could come out from uh, the Pugna if you, again, you have all your eggs Five in the Troll Warlord basket. Remain. The Scepter we reworked for a Troll would help with that a little bit. Um, Range Axis dispels enemies, and Melee Axis dispels yourself. Radiant the cooldown is reduced from nine to four. Mana cost in half. That's and, the new uh, Aghanim Scepter? Yep. Spirit. I did not know that. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Which is a lot better than disabling your allies and griefing them by casting Berserker's Rage on them. Oh, what's that? My mid lane? You want to go run into them by yourself? All right, have fun. I've heard, I think I told you this story once Ten before. I had somebody seconds. play like position four or five Troll Warlord in a game that I was playing, and I ended up losing in the end because he rushed the egg in Scepter and thought that he was going to help me by clicking it on me. I was like solo carrying the game, and I got disabled by my teammate. He provided me nothing the entire game, 
and then eventually got me killed trying to assist. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I love it. That's your typical pub in North America. It, it was time to put the game down for the day after that. Yeah, you're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a walk, get some fresh air. Um, you know who's not going for a walk? Thunder Predator and Five Man Midas is their uh, you know, tournament lives on the line, specifically Five Man Midas is they're down one zero. They get their last pick storm and they respond with Leo style Ember, an absolute classic. Yeah, this guy is an absolute beast on this hero. I mean, his Wind Ranger has had a flawless record so far in this tournament, but uh, oh, his Ember Spirit is uh, in the Scoffhead. And up against uh, the Troll Warlord here, I mean, he's just going to get kited around. We talked about uh, this potential issue. So Storm Spirit, he's going to have to, he's going to have his work cut out for him in the mid lane. He needs to win this and somehow get a very early Orchid against the Ember Spirit. It is North Storm Spirit favored, right? Doesn't Storm Spirit have the advantage in this lane? Yes, uh, at the start of it anyways. It becomes a little bit easier for, for Leo Style after he has a couple of levels. And of course, uh, your harass does end up sticking with um, the Sleight of Fist. But Storm Spirit has so much armor that it's not that easy to harass him with it. And of course, he's able to burn right through your Flame Guard because of the massive amount of magic damage coming out from the Static Remnant and the Overcharge. So it's a bit favored for him. But if you start losing at any point, it's very easy for you to just pop off on the Ember Spirit. The Ember also rotates just slightly easier than the Storm. Yeah. At the start, anyways. Later on, Drug Spirit definitely has the advantage on that one. Anyways, right. let's go. We're Game making it. This is going to be fun, man. Uh, I, we'll see what this Brewmaster can do. Obviously, he got some, some serious love in this patch. Absolutely needed the Primal Split. Uh, can grant uh, the Void Brewling with the Aghanim Shard. And then, obviously, the Aghanim Scepter giving you two charges of the primal split which can also be canceled at any time okay i got to peru dota one two three i absolutely love this guy seeming basically uh every chant he's wrote to uh, mlpg movie star league of pro gaming thank you very much for correcting me so we're gonna see sladen on the four position wind ranger oh wait yeah Four position Wind Ranger, MJZ down here just bullying out with the Ogre match. They want to make sure they can get these runes. And even top rune, I don't know if you can contest this on Monster. MNZ can do some serious damage to you. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like RL wants to rotate up just to make sure that they go two for two. Okay, this is smart. Bottom lane, though, a lot of damage coming in. Shu does have the decay, but again, you're against, you know, four heroes that are pretty great early game right now. Mm hmm. MNZ, he's actually getting chased off by this Brewmaster here. Thunderclap is no joke. It's pretty lengthy slow at four seconds. Ooh, Shoo, he might go down bottom. No decay for three seconds. The toss out. Is it enough? Oh my gosh, unbelievable. Slayton, the M or, uh, Sonic, just the MVP. Yeah, yep. I mean, <laughs> we talked about what a high impact he had in the last game, despite the fact that they lost it. Unfortunately, uh... Shoot does end up salving himself back up, which isn't going to end up bringing him at full HP, but feels really bad as an undying to commit a salve that early. Yeah, at least he doesn't end up dying, though, right? Yeah, exactly. You don't want to give uh, an early advantage to the guys on the Thunder Predator here. So good to get chased out of lane, but Slayton also does quite a bit of damage. Saber might just go down, though, without the boards to slow. All right. Ends up getting real close as well on the wind rangers by 15 percent, so they aren't able to keep that chase going and finish off sacred there that Top. good old uh monster uh the good old denying your boar feels good yeah no xp or gold it's worth a uh, pretty big xp bounty at 60. yeah it is it's a big deal you cannot feed those boars in the lane stage because then you just lose the the lane because they'll get to level two before you and can play really aggressive yeah. On top lane, into pulling the creep wave between the tier one and two tower. As to uh, your basic stuff for Tiny, who struggles uh, to exist inside the lane, can't trade uh, underneath it, and takes a lot of harass from creeps. As if he tries to trade for right clicks. Mid lane, it looks like it's a little bit in favor of the Storm Spirit. Uh, like you mentioned, RL, he's having a pretty good time uh, sitting at. Uh, Actually, after you finish this creep wave here, it'll be 10 and 4 to 5 and 1, double the CS and denies. Yeah, there's not much you can do when you have level 2 flame guard. The, the 220 will protect uh, you quite a bit, but you uh, 
really struggle level one because you literally cannot use the flame guard at all in the lane. <laughs> yeah, the moment you try to walk at RRL, he just pops that uh, static remnant and just goes disappears. He's got level two now. Yeah. So but the he's... overcharge, uh, or the overload rather, doing some pretty good work there. Nice harassment from RRL though, knowing he's going to try and uh, pop that flame guard, you know, ASAP, and ends up just getting a lot of right click damage in instead, Denied. forcing Leo Style off the lane, off the lane again, and he's up to thir 14 and six. Yeah, Leo Style tipping him for some reason, just absolutely bodying him lane, maybe just to show of respect. He was like, "All right, all right, I see your storm, I see it. You know what you're <laughs> doing, sir." Yeah. Top, top lane oh the tomato is it gonna clap someone it's debating it's thinking about it get the clap sir do it it's not gonna clap oh it already clapped that's why bottom lane kits continuing to uh work on let's see as the courier ends up going down slate and he's about to find a second <laughs> that feels good All right, not bad. Uh, 60 gold going to everybody on your team, and they're not going to be able to send items out for a little while either. Dude, Sacred. Sacred's taking so much damage in the bot lane that uh, Solrep, he gets level 3 now, so if that was level 2 Solrep, you might have been able to find the kill, but Sacred's solving back up. He's doing pretty good. How soon until Shu has to, like, walk base is the thing, right? On, on Undying, like, he's run out of mana. He has a Clarity, but he has no Courier now. Uh, that looks probably like he's gonna go for the clarity. <laughs> That's probably just about uh, now. Shoot. He's Ooh, got the board. Mid lane, Leo style, the wraparound from Sonic. This guy has set up so many kills. He does it again. First blood for the tiny. Not bad. I mean, we saw him do this against Leo style a number of times last game, but Leo style ended up uh, popping off anyway. But now, so heavily CS. I mean, you got double now on Storm Spirit, and now first blood going their way his uh, game is definitely going to slow down he's got the flame guard built so he's able to recover and go into the jungle if he absolutely has to he jungle a little bit quicker with this one but still uh new style he's used to getting a lot more out of the mid lane than this yeah absolutely uh, he's very much struggling you know you are level five on rl and he goes for the three points in the overload which is more damage it is uh it's pretty sick leo style definitely starting to struggle I mean, I don't even know why I say start. He's been struggling. 26 and 10, my lord. Um, bottom lane, Shu and Kits. Shu's going to take a lot of damage here. All for this boar. He's going to go down. He does give the last hit on the boar over to Kits, but I think, you know, 169 gold, very nice number for the Brewmaster, or for the Beastmaster, is better than the, the you know, the 60 gold for that, that boar there. Top lane as well. They're able to chase down MJZ. Sonic has an avalanche. If he can close the gap, a nicely timed double crit. Able to pop that fairy fire. He's still running to Ogre and the... Oh, he, like the thing is he knows he's going to die, but it's just time wasted. And look at all of the space this Ogre is making. <laughs> uh, he's out running both uh, Sonic and Monster Heal. Eventually clap him and they'll melee him down together. But oh my lord, what a nuisance. Yeah. And see what uh, the, where the damage is. They almost managed to get RRL slayed and couldn't quite bring him down. He managed to get back. No power shot available. I don't think it'll quite finish him off anyways, and he's just going to let him go. We might uh, search for him over in this camp here, see if uh, he ends up sticking around. But I think he realizes Storm Spirit. He's not going to end up giving up his lead that he ended up getting. Six minutes, and Leo Style, there's his recovery. He manages to find a double damage rune, so... That's the price you paid for committing so much onto that Ogre Magi. Storm Spirit uh, forced to walk all the way back to base at the 330 movement speed. And no one can, can contest the, the four minute rune or the six minute rune. Uh, Monster top lane might be in some trouble here. Is MNZ just going to pop that in rage and purge off that slow? Uh, he does have Earthshock in just a couple seconds. You're pretty quick on this guy, but not faster than an Ursa with Bloodlust. And Monster. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. He's dead. One more auto attack from the Ursa finds it. And this is where this lane gets really difficult. I mean, they, they picked this Brewmaster hoping that it's going to pan out, but they just immediately responded. Ooh, bottom lane. Tombstone does end up going down. Nice find there from Slayton. But you do find the Beastmaster, and I think that's all you wanted. Brian comes in in the mid lane. Uh, Leo Styles DD, RL. I don't know about this one, sir. <laughs> 
He bottles back up, so he's got a little bit of mana to disengage. Leo Style thinks about going for it, but he realizes Sonic's here with the assist, so he does have to get back. Respect, uh, respect the Storm Spirit here. Overall looking pretty good. I mean, net worth-wise, Ursa obviously at the top here. Almost level 7 to the <laughs> level 4 of the Brewmaster monster, having an absolutely abysmal start to this game. Mm -hmm. Monster... I mean, Ooh, this tiny coming oh. in. I don't know if you have the damage for the uh, for the Ursa, but maybe you can toss that ogre back onto the tower. They do exactly that. He's gonna pop that drunken brawler, but the nice stun, the body blocks from Sonic. This guy, they're not gonna be able to get him again. Oh man, ogre, too dang tanky. He's invested yeah. all of his points out of intelligence into strength. <laughs> I mean, he's got an incredibly high strength growth rate for an int here at 3.5 per level. The guy just can't be brought down. Sonic, despite these amazing tosses, eight minutes, illusion and spawn, Storm Spirit gets it, and uh, Leo Style, he's forced to get back, just remnant away, in fact. Yeah, with that uh, tiny showing his face there for a moment, if he gets... Ooh, nice tower deny from Monster. Uh, kind of necessary, though. But if he gets that Avatos, the Storm Spirit might have been able to blow him up with those three points in overload and the static remnant. But Leo Style just bases, comes back, full health, full mana, everything. He's feeling really good. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wanted to touch. Ooh. I want to touch real quickly on Monster and uh, just not having such a good time in the offlane. And this happened against Arkosh as well. The guy managed to accomplish tons despite not finding farm in that game. And uh, you now last game didn't go good for him either. Ooh. Mid lane, some dukes out between the support and. Uh, the two spirits, but just trading some HP. RL does have that illusion still bottled. The thing is, is like Kits is at least doing relatively decent on the Troll Warlord, and if he can get a Battle Fury around the same time as Ursa, well, he's not going to get around the same time as Ursa as he did not opt to finish the treads, and you do have this Wraith Band, so you are quite a bit behind Ursa on the way to the Battle Fury here. Nice Avalanche Toss, looking for Sacred the Tombstone. It is down, doing some work, slowing him, but he's able to walk away thanks to that Bloodlust movement speed and MJZ. He's got to be careful. He's got these three zombie boys chasing him down. Another Whirling Axes. Kits with a great shackle coming in from Slayton. Should be able to finish this kill eventually. Storm Spirit says, uh, oh, he wanted to snipe it, but it's not going to go his way. Yep. He just uh, thinks about joining the fray as well, but uh, it's too far over. Sonic is sitting pretty low, though. Yeah, they're going to try and go on him, but a great shackle holding Storm Spirit in place. He's going to have to commit all his mana to Ball Lightning away, and now Sonic might have been baited. A little toss back, but Leo Style, oh, he has no sleight of fist. He went to those max uh, flame guards, so no cooldowns. <laughs> uh, worried about the kill potential here that uh, they have on 5 and mines. And again, uh, if you end up not doing as hot in the lane, then the max flame guard build does help you farm a little bit quicker. Brewmaster all popped in the top lane. He's going to be able to throw that... Uh, Ogre into the air, and there's going to be the second boulder. If he can chase him down, it doesn't look like it. He wants to go back, just get this my... Uh, oh, he doesn't get the rune! Oh, that is unfortunate. And now, Monster, you do not have enough uh, mana here to work with. Uh, wait, did he end up using both charges of it? Or is that no, 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 the Ags gives you the charge. Yeah. My dad misread that one on the pinch notes. That would be kind of ridiculous. If you just start with two, two right away. Yeah. Leo Style still uh, struggling, but he's uh, catching back up. He's sitting uh, fourth here on the net worth, and Storm Spirit's actually fallen a little bit behind him. Five hundred net worth down. Just yeah. uh, he's, he's been going for kills, but uh, he has been farming nearly as fast. So Leo Style taking advantage of this max flame guard build and this arcane rune because he's going to commit. I mean, he can do a lot of damage here on Leo Style, and he will finally pop that Flame Guard, but, I mean, you did a lot more damage this Storm. Yeah, and he'll just re-engage in another 11 seconds here. Ooh, a nice slight change into the Power Shot. RL's going to have to base her, like, find some creeps on his way back, at least. Yep. Nice job on Leo, zoning him out of lane. Imagine he'll pop his Flame Guard again as he's still got the Arcane Rune active. MJZ on the Ogre is level 6. Yeah, it's not so bad. We're 11 minutes in. No, I'm saying that's pretty good. Like, considering he just ran around dying and, like, making space for an Ursa, he was borderline, you know, not sitting in lane at all. The Ursa's level 10 as a result, right? That's the, that's the big benefit you got. Yeah. Speaking of, he's uh, finally finished up his uh, power treads and his battle fury, so he's hitting, sitting pretty far. A thousand net worth up on the Troll Warlord right now. Yeah, I mean... 
12 minute battle fury treads is pretty darn good timing he's also got the chipped vest which is fantastic almost an engagement in the mid lane unable to find it slayton Ooh, rl's looking for the rune but there's no way you can go for that a nice shackle as well Leo Styles gonna bottle up that invis, start using that regen pretty much immediately. They salve and it gets popped right away. They will go ahead and pass top that bottle off, thanks to the monster TP to the mid lane. And it is now a three to three v four. The question is, who do you go for? It looks like it's gonna be the ogre magi shoe. Pops that flesh gold, drops the tombstone down, but Sonic falling super low. He will die to the remnant, but it's a one for one trade. Now in comes MNZ. This is the guy you gotta be scared of. You throw him into the air, you can't let him do anything. So want to take down this uh, tombstone here, but Shu wants to protect it. Another Cyclone. He'll just end up getting the deny off next to auto attack. He comes off. They dance around it. They try to get the last one. Enrage comes out. He's going to be forced to uh, jump forward. Now Leo style searing chains onto the undying. Does have a nice decay to give himself some HP to work with. They go ahead and pull Leo style under the tower. They get the, uh, they get the kill thanks to the avalanche. Sonic is back, baby. He's going to go ahead and toss back that wind ranger and then set that up with a nice amount of burst magic damage falling super low. Pops that wand, but cannot survive as Kits finds the kill. All right, some signs of life from Five Man Midas. Yeah, things were looking pretty heavy in the favor of uh, Thunder Predator there, but that fight managed to snag you almost a 1,200 uh, XP swing and uh, got about 1,000 gold going your way. Killing Leo style was pretty important as well. He was starting to pull ahead of the storm there. But uh, there was no buying back and coming into that fight because he had just remnant uh, base and, or sorry, teleported the base and remnant back out. Ooh, beast. Brewmaster, sorry, not Beastmaster. Beastmaster commits the roar. They find themselves a nice kill there in the mid lane, and turning that into a tier one tower would be an, a great objective for them. Dude, what do you think of this new uh, Aghanim shard for Beastmaster? How weird is that thing? Uh, Have you read it? It gives you controllable hawks again rather than just sending them. But dive bomb. I read yeah, that. Yeah, I think they have like the the random dive bomb, which just sounds worse than having the hawk there. <laughs> We've had some stuff like that before. Do you remember uh, the old tree protector? You put the sentinels, or sentinels in the trees, and they would die, stun people. Troll warlord has been found. He gets shackled. He does have the battle trance. He's gonna pop it immediately, but Leo style, he cannot get the roots. He's just getting kited, and then there's gonna be a remnant away. He turns his attention on over to Slayton, but the wind run doing too much work. In comes the big boy Storm, as he's gonna be able to get a double killer for them and. MNZ focusing on Roche, burst that bad boy down, and now Sacred slowed down in some trouble. You don't have this uh, primal split for another two seconds, but Shu, he's getting these decays. The Flesh Golem amping so much damage. There's going to be the Avalanche, the toss. You can't reduce that Cyclone, and oh my goodness, MNZ almost removed from the fight as they focus down the rest of them. RRL running low on mana. The toss back onto MJZ is going to finish off the Ogre. Can they get the first life of the Ursa? The Avalanche, it will find it. I think it's time to back. You don't have a lot of mana to work with, but a big win once again for Five Man Midas. Yeah, managing to kick several of those heroes down and burden MNZ's Aegis immediately. The Cyclone actually was reduced. Uh, it doesn't work quite the same as the Yule Scepter there. Uh, it's like a non dispel Cyclone thing, different mechanic. So he was held in the air for half the time because he did pop the Enrage first, but it didn't really matter. He was held in the air for long enough and wasn't able to wreak havoc with that battle fear when everyone was grouped up. Nice play there by Monster. Yeah, definitely. I just realized, did you see what they changed Ogre's 25 talent to? Bounty. Ogre Magi? Uh, the Fire Blast versus the 20% for a one and a half second bash. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, very nice, see? Yeah, that, uh, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. It's definitely not good. You'll 100% take the Fire Blast dash, but it's definitely funny. Mid lane, Ember Spirit's been found. The Avalanche, the toss, all the magic damage. Leo Style goes down once again. He's had back-to-back -back deaths now. Look at what I'm on the net worth. Where'd he go? He was towards the top. You're behind Storm now, sir. Yeah, I mean, he was. there's a pair that was 500 gold up on the Storm Spirit now sitting 300 gold behind him. It's uh, going to be even worse than that by the time he actually manages to... Get out here. Actually, his uh, remnant won't expire. He'll just be able to pop that into the mid lane. Doesn't have to expend town portal scroll for that. Nicely done. So we are just rushing the Aghanim Scepter on the Brewmaster, giving him the two charges of the Primal Split and then allowing him to cancel it from any of the Brewlings and return to that one. So rather than always going to your Storm Panda, 
Uh, or I'm sorry, you're it's is it it's Earth Panda then Storm Panda or then Fire Panda then Storm Panda? Is that how it was in the past? I don't yep. know. But top lane Leo style, nice root. Can hold them in place. You gotta be careful. Kits does have the battle trance, but the double multicast. He gets saved. They turn it around. MJZ, he's gonna have to run, and so will be gone on Sacred, but. Managed to get that kill. Troll Warlord falls in the end. Another tornado throwing that Windrunner in the into the sky. But you know I mean, this is just the team fight potential here is just way too much. Leo style getting out on 90 HP, still running for his life. But Monster trying to close the gap. Gets the purge. Will remove that flame guard, but it's got nothing left. Yeah, and they're not interested on in taking this fight here. MNZ, he wants to finish his BKB before he jumps in. So. Fight after fight, now going the way of five man Midas, and uh, they're up 14 to seven. Despite the, the fact that Thunder Predator has managed to keep the gold lead in their favor. I'm say, and they've kept it pretty even, but you know what they did? Sonic picks off Leo style once again. He didn't think they had a ward, but look at this. It's right outside range. Sonic's yep. Tiny has been instrumental to five man Midas winning these games or like having a chance at winning. He was uh, a big part of them winning the game against Arkosh, and here he is once again absolutely owning. That should have banned this one out. It was the highest impact in that last game. And he's about to take down another hero. Yeah, they're just falling around the map one at a time, and they get some good jungle items. Philosopher's Stone and Dragon Scale now. Uh, Philosopher's Stone, I'm assuming they'll just put on Shu. It'd be pretty nice. And then that Dragon Scale, uh, probably your Brewmaster, if I had to guess. Those are some great items. Oh, Troll's just going to keep the Dragon Scale for now. Interesting. They've really struggled on taking towers, as well. They don't have anything on the side of Thunder Predator. Or against Thunder Predator, right? Uh, five Man Midas, like they're working on this tier one top. It's the first tower they could potentially take. Uh, while Thunder Predator has taken all three of the tier one, so just doing better, I guess, as far as uh, finding these objectives. I mean, they've been playing very well. They've been getting these kills, but Thunder Predator has been making all of it happen on Five Man Midas' side of the maps. So they haven't been able to get that much more map control because that MNZ has had tons of space to farm, so he continues to sit pretty far ahead of the Troll Warlord. Um, that's going to start to turn around now, though. Uh, I think uh, at this point, MNZ needs to start contributing to fights now that he's got this BKB. And they're smoking mid lane. They're like kind of pinging out Slayton, but they don't have the vision quite yet. There is a ward on the high ground that they know of, but they're looking in the, in the jungle instead. Maybe just going to blow up this Ogre Magi. Leo style, he doesn't want to bop, uh, like walk into this. Sonic, he's going to get the vision looking for the Ursa. He does have BKB though, and on the backside, Shu gets a nice high ground tombstone. They cannot fight into this. We've seen over and over how good these things are. And there's going to be the primal split, chain stunning them down. Leo style cannot take down the undying. Roar comes out onto RL, but they have plenty of chase here. That bonus movement speed's only temporary. You'll be able to get two more. A fantastic fight once again for five man Midas. Yeah, and uh, the gold lead is negligible now. Just up 1k now, so kill after kill going their way. I mean, uh, look at these uh, XP and. Uh, net worth grabs here. There's litter with the green dots of Five Man Midas's kills. Monster getting focus fire down, but you don't even have a javelin here on Slayton. Yeah, he should go down here because of the help of the Ursa. A nice find indeed. A little bit awkward for him to continue to stay down there in such a such a scary place on the map. Yeah. Uh, MNZ still is uh, pretty terrified, even if you've managed to get a bunch of kills on your own side here. But uh, Troll Warlord slowly closing this net worth lead. Stupendous! Battle Fury. Never refuse. Battle Fury, Sanj, and Yasha doing the job. Ursa uh, so struggling to keep up here. By the way, speaking of Ursa, Dipper on top of him is absolutely adorable. Oh, right. I love that thing. I wish I would have got it. Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the hats I was not lucky enough to get. This uh, yeah. battle pass yeah. season. It's very cute. I think it's the only one I didn't get on, you know, classic valve. You'll be able to buy one eventually, right? Uh, you can buy one in like a year, but I'll probably forget by that point. It'll have something even better. Primal Split committed bottom, and they're wrapping around on the backside. He gets the D ward on Sacred, but an Avalanche toss. He's just going to get bursted down. He's going to get the roar up onto the Troll Warlord, but Shui drops the Tombstone again, perfectly placed on the high ground. And now look at the zombie spawning. You've got to run a tornado holding this ogre in place. Leo style able to clear up those tombs or those zombies thanks to that slide of fist. But now you're going to lose the ogre. Another two kills. Here's the thing, though, Neff. You're getting okay. these kills, but you keep losing objectives. Your tier two is gone. 
your tier two is gone and these kills uh they've been on mjz mostly i mean he's sitting at uh, one and eight he doesn't really care that he's going down as the pause five ogre magi i mean again you're managing to keep up with this Ursa's net worth, but I think it's just a little while until he manages to hit critical mass. Once he does, he's going to struggle to deal with him. He hasn't opted to activate this BKB yet. So in these fights, he's been getting hit by the tornado and being taken out. As soon as he pops his BKB, I think it's going to be a different story. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Leo Style almost gets caught there in the mid lane. Very close, but just baiting it out as he had a nice defensive remnant and a regen rune to boot. Uh, yeah, I, that's that's my big concern is, you know, what happens when Ursa finally presses BKB and he's getting closer and closer to the Abyssal. They're going to walk onto the high ground. Monster, he has the Axe. He's just going to Primal Split immediately and he's got to get these spirits out of here. A nice Avalanche, a toss, a Whirling Axe is some serious uh, slowing coming down here from the side of Five Man Midas, but another Tombstone on the high ground. You can't fight into these. A Roar does catch a troll. Is he going to be able to be kept alive? He did bash. He doesn't get the Battle Trance off, and now they're turning around. Sacred Falling Well, a nice Vortex from RRL. The Avalanche is again from the Tiny doing some serious work, but he's able to make it down to the low ground. And now Monster, he's on the run. He does not have another charge for 70 more seconds. But he's pretty tanky. MNC trying to close the gap. He gets the bash. Triple kill for the Ursa. You know, Nephew you ask what happens when he presses BKB. We finally get some uh, insight, it would seem. Oh, RL. He's out of mana. This is not where you want to be. He's got to be very careful. He's trying to throw his body at them as Sonic. But you are got four heroes wrapping around. And that is going to be a dead Storm Spirit. Oh, you are all by yourself, sir. Sonic, he was thinking about going back in. Might have been able to He's going to go for Slayton. 100%. Yep. <laughs> he, he can pick off any of these heroes at low HP, but uh, he didn't want to die in the process. Yeah, I, if they stuck around like that, I think he could have gotten two of them with that toss avalanche combo. The Ursa kill would have been huge, but uh, he will take the Wind Ranger as a consolation prize. They ended Storm Spirit's godlike spree as well. I mean, it's went down for a lot of gold. Urshan not, not responding quite yet. That is the one saving grace of losing that team fight. It looks like it ended up being a max respawn time Deceptive at the full almost three minutes. Leo Style has an invis and just pops their uh sent or pops their uh dust. Oh my gosh, what is it called? A smoke? Can we even can we talk here today? What's going on? There, there. <laughs> it's my brain. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> Don't wanna, don't wanna end up like Vicky, man. Come on, give yourself a little bit of a break after today. I know you've been working nonstop. Yeah, I, you know this is uh, the tomorrow is gonna be the first day I have a day off, and by day off I mean I don't work in the morning. Mm. Nice. Uh, what do you mean, like two hours of sleep a night or something? Uh, more than that. I'm getting a handful. Uh, I see, maybe three or four on a good day. <laughs> but, uh, Gets, you know, he, he needs this BKB of his own. He's getting kited up in these team fights. Last uh, team fight, he just ended up getting Prima Bash. Didn't even get off the battle trance, right? Yeah. That's the big deal. Is he he did get the statuses from the Sanjinyash, but we know the SNY, uh, you know, status of this build is not as good as it used to be. Um, you do have the 25% there, but it does not exist on Satanic anymore, and it does not stack with other forms of uh, status resist from Sanj. So unless you get a... Uh, Titan Sliver, that's all you're getting. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. I mean, it, it makes sense they changed that one around. I mean, we saw what... Uh, oh. Who had the Orchid? Leo Style picked up an Orchid on this uh, Ember Spirit and ends up finding a really nice pickoff there and sets up for a second on top of Sonic just as Roche respawns, which is an absolute disaster. I mean, this isn't an item you would normally ever see on the Ember Spirit, but it's so good against a number of heroes here. I mean... Troll Warlord is going to stop from popping his ultimate. It's going to stop Groove Master and it's going to stop Storm Spirit from getting away. Yeah, this I mean, is a great Orchid game. It, it makes sense. You would have rather been playing a Voice Bit or something like that, but you know, uh, role play. So we saw RL. He ended up going for the Electric Vortex Aghanim Scepter to pull everyone in. Now, in a lot of games, I feel like this is pretty good if you have follow up, but I don't know where the follow up really is on the side of Five Man Midas besides, you know, just keeping Troll Warlord alive, right? Trying to CC as many people so Troll can get Battle Trance off. Like, that's about it, right? Yeah. Oh, troll, uh... Struggle to deal with anything this game. He's almost got his BKB. I don't know, man. This game is looking so hard for Five Man Midas. I'm struggling to figure out how they can come back here. I mean, you're gonna need some beautiful splits here by the Brewmaster. He's got his egg in him, but uh, he's been working on the shard for the last little while. 
Yeah, I mean, they've managed to close the gap quite a bit. Um, or they, like, managed to close the gap quite a bit on the side of five-man Midas uh, when they were winning a bunch of fights, but it was never really going in their favor. And then one bad fight turns into a Roshan, and suddenly, again, you're at a 6K, about 7K, almost 8K gold lead, right? It, it's just getting worse and worse, it seems. Yeah, and I think a lot of this came down to whether, like, this... Ursa just activating that BKB the one single time that he has so far. When you can't throw him into the air, he ends up ripping through your team and Orchid doing a lot of work because you don't have uh, much to kite them other than that Cyclone on the Brewmaster. And Sonic, he, he's fallen off now too. I mean, a lot of the damage came out from him, but as the game goes on, you're not able to burst people with that toss avalanche combo anymore. Yeah, you're right. That's one of the things that's like struggles when you, if you are playing the four position tiny like you can do a lot of work in the early mid game uh at trying to shut heroes down but if you know that end early mid game is over and you start falling very far behind the hero seems to fall off with it cloak of flames found by sacred he's gonna hold on to this one the extra magic resistance is gonna go a pretty long way you just have to worry about that coming out from uh, the heroes on five man midas the burn damage feels pretty good as well, considering you're normally playing pretty far forward in these team fights. Gets the ceremonial robe. Oh, he's gonna take the ceremonial robe, isn't he? Oh no, he's not. Okay. He's gonna keep the cloak of flame. Someone should definitely use the cer Oh, you're kidding me. What happened? Do you see where Storm is? Storm literally just zipped in to the to the Beastmaster with his whole team behind him, and they paused as soon as the Storm vortexes the Beastmaster. Hmm. I mean, this guy's still in ball lightning. He vortexed while inside the ball lightning. Oh my goodness. This is... He's inv he's invulnerable. He yeah, 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 I know, but it's gonna, like, the, the question is... I think Storm just has to leave now. Their element of surprise is over. I'm not sure that he can. <laughs> he's just... Do you think he's just gonna get orchided from Leo Style? What's his cast range? Leo Style is going to kill him without a doubt. Uh, he can go. He doesn't even maybe, have vision of Leo style. So he can go maybe about as far as I just pinged with his with the uh, 600 mana he's got left. And Leo style is very easily able to close that gap with Fire Remnant and Slate of Fist. Oh my goodness! This is as bad as it gets. They will be able to look onto the back line. They even lose Tiny. RRL goes down. They're gonna go down on. Oh, he gets the BKB up, hitting that battle trance, but he pops the enrage, and then you have two lives here on this Ursa, about to be three base because you have the cheese swapped in as well, and that's just going to be the end of the game. That's got to be it. They can't do anything here. Too many stacks of that Fury Swipe on the Ursa. The guy is absolutely... <laughs> this guy is fucking... 21k net worth, and uh, Troll Warlord, he stuck at just uh, 15 himself. I mean, it was only a matter of time. Yeah, it really is. He's doing great. Um, Monster. No! Oh, so close. Almost gets it off, but not going to happen. And they just continue the bashing. That's going to be it. Uh, like, they're just too strong. Like you said, Ursa, he has 21,000 net worth here, 29 minutes into the game. He just crushed it. Yeah, didn't even get a chance to use, uh, well, yeah, I guess he did use it to the start of that team fight, but the Aghanim Scepter and uh, Aghanim Shard there on Brewmaster, it didn't really come into effect this game. The two charges I couldn't really feel. It felt like a little bit of a waste of money, but I'm not sure picking up different items would have won this for you. RL with a nice, sick AoE Vortex, but again, there's just no follow-up damage. Your Tiny can go with an Avatos, but doesn't really matter. He even has the, uh, the Shard, which gives your team the Electric Rave. Um, so maybe that's the idea. Oh, no. He gets the Yules off. So RL, he might survive. No, the roar just to make sure he goes down. Kit's on the run. Battle Trance in three seconds. But again, you still have this Aegis on the Earth, so it's not expiring for another 50 seconds. Oh, okay. There it is. There's your Void Brewling. Can they make some things happen here? They got to get at least one or two pickoffs. The Windrunner able to just kite this out, and now he's forced back into the base. That's the spirit. Oh, Avalanche toss. You blinked onto the wrong person, sir. Popsy Enrage looking for the Troll Willard. He has to battle trance, but the Enrage, the Yules, he can't do anything here, sir. Oh my gosh. He will. He doesn't even get the first life. It's going to go down. 
to shoe with that soul rip, but Brewmaster, he has a... <laughs> oh, he gets sized by the orc, and he's not going to be able to get the brew split off. He needed one more second. Oh my goodness, the Abyssal Blade as well. Sonic dies in the base. That is everyone down, and the GG's finally come out as Thunder Predator will close out the second and final series of the day. Yeah, nice performance by them. Uh, not only winning this one, but uh, their previous series 2-0 in the Movie Star Liga Pro Gaming. No hot day for them. Leo Style, he struggled in the middle lane at the start of this game, but, uh, you know, Ursa just managed to pop off. MNZ did an amazing job. It was just a matter of him getting that BKB and uh, choosing to activate it inside these team fights. After that, just so heavily in their favor. And you no know, win probability, while it did favor 5-man minus his draft, uh, they just couldn't keep up with the farm there on Thunder Predator. Yeah, I mean, this is this is typical MNZ, right? We've seen him do this over and over again. If he gets space, he ends up just crushing the net worth charts. And he ends the game 13-0-7. I mean, we can, we can look at player net worth the entire game. He is just so far ahead. Troll trying to keep pace, but... It just doesn't really happen. Post 20 minutes, it just flatlines for him and his team kind of starts falling off as well. And yeah, I mean, Troll, you're not a big fan of the hero. We have not seen it do well in this tournament at all. And uh, that's it seems to be a recurring theme, I guess. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately for 5M Midas, they are going to be knocked out of the tournament here. Uh, this will be the second match they ended up playing in the lower bracket. So this ends them in... God, this puts them in, what, uh, fifth to sixth place. They go home with uh, $1,750 in the BTS Pro Series 4. I did manage to snag a monster for a post-game interview. Unfortunately, we didn't get the chance against Arkosh yesterday. Uh, just needs a two minutes before he's ready, apparently. Oh, okay. I mean, we're going to talk about the bracket here anyway. We are, you know, two days into the lower bracket run tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be starting, I believe, with Sad Boys versus four Zoomers, which is going to be your upper bracket. Uh, two NA Giants going head-to-head, -head, and then the lower bracket elimination game is going to be two South American Giants going head-to-head. -head. Thunder Predator versus Beast Coast, and Thunder Predator coming off some really good games uh, today, but so is Beast Beast Coast. I mean, Beast Coast has been looking borderline unstoppable. They were top of the group stage and unfortunately just got 2 0 by Sad Boys. But other than that, they have been looking incredibly good. They 2 0 Thunder Predator earlier in the tournament. Uh, they're going to see if they can do it again. But despite having the stand ins, you know, Beast Coast looking pretty strong. That's where we're at right now. I am excited for this one, though, Ricky. I absolutely love these uh, Beast Coast versus Thunder Predator games. Again, uh, there's a bit of a grudge between these two teams, and that means it's all the more spicy when they play each other. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Always, always. And I know that you are excited for the boomers on Zoomer action. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't, man? It's just a, it's just, it's a story. To, it's, it's an epic storyline. <laughs> uh, DNM has been doing an excellent job uh, with these boomers, by the way. He really has. Yeah, I mean, he's fitting in with the team really well. They're playing like they, they seem to be getting better as the tournament goes on. When with something we talked about, like the Sad Boys lineup, they maybe didn't get to scrim or practice much before the team formed uh, for this tournament. And, you know, they, they were a little shaky the, the first few days, but have just really excelled as the tournament has gone on. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, questioning how much they had managed to scrim uh, beforehand, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Sometimes these teams, uh, they scrim a little bit, then they start to hit their stride. Sometimes they just start playing together and they happen to, to mesh really well. I know that teams sometimes have this honeymoon period where everything seems to click together and after a little while, things fall apart again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see whether or not they continue to play together upcoming in this DPC here. I mean, you got a bunch of really big names here. It's there is pretty. There's just some potential that everybody plans on going their separate ways and put together a potential stack for the DPC. Um, but and we'll have to see there. It's nice to see them all inside this tournament playing. Looks like uh, Monster has just gotten back to me, and we're ready to go. Going to drag him into the call. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm gonna. There's gonna be some Jerry production problems here. I'm gonna have to have him fix it. I'm sure, but we'll be fine. All right. Still fixed there. Whoop. All right. You're All good. Right. We... Uh, hello? Hello. Hello. We got hey, guys. Everybody, uh, when we open qualifier for the BTS Pro Series 4, you guys had an awesome run through the tournament. Uh, do you have a webcam at all, or is that just uh, not an option for this one? Oh, uh, I can't I, get I it on screen I... anyway. Okay. <laughs> no worries, man. 
but yeah, welcome, uh, Ricky. I'll let you start. I mean, I'm sure you have a, a bunch of questions. I've got uh, a couple listed here, but uh, uh, one spicy one that I wanted to bring up. I think I mentioned to Monster before we started. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get around to that. <laughs> I one. wonder what that could be. Um, yeah. yeah. So I got a question for you. Uh, as an open qualifier team, like, did you guys get to? scrim or practice at all or was this kind of like a last minute stack uh you know i'm sure i'm sure you guys know each other a little bit um from playing pubs and stuff but uh how did this stack come around um so we're, we're we basically didn't scrim until like a week before we we're like oh you guys want to play this okay we'll play this and then <laughs> yeah we played open qualies and made it through so yeah i don't i don't think there was that much i, I didn't even know my Pos four and five before the tournament. So there you go. The classic <laughs> NA stacks. That's that's what you hear. Really? Yeah, that's the everyday NA. So you, you beat uh, two like uh, pretty good teams on your way here. There was a Rod Rock, which is the A and B stack. I mean, that one plays in absolutely everything. Uh, and then you beat No Pangalier. Were you expecting to beat No Pango on your way here? Uh, yeah, but I was expecting them to be in the finals. Interesting. To be honest happen to be in the same side of the bracket as them. I guess it's just uh, a little bit different system that ePulse had than face it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, for this one, it, it's uh, a lot more stacked in the top bracket because SA and NA have their different brackets. I think it's a good thing for us because I think the SA bracket's much more competitive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Infamous was in that, and that would have been a hell of a match. I'm surprised yeah. <laughs> that Jaguares ended up getting through there. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't actually watch the game, but it's just like, oh, these guys beat, uh, beat Infamous? Oh, they must be pretty good. Uh, well, let's talk about your run through uh, the actual group stage and then the tournament here. Uh, you had some hit and miss moments. Uh, Arkosh, I want to bring up first of all. Were you expecting to beat them? Do you think that would be an easy match? Do you think you 2-0 them? How do you think that one was uh, supposed to go in your mind? Um, so during the group stages, we weren't even really sure what we were trying to draft we're just we we're kind of like using it as uh, a substitute for scrims we were just like oh <laughs> no one gets yeah. eliminated in group stage like okay we can use these to figure out like what we're actually trying to do and so i i think uh we didn't expect to get 2 would by arkosh i can tell you that at least in the group stages but it looks like we were able to recover from that later on so yeah, Maybe it right. wasn't too bad. Yeah, you ended up beating uh, Jaguars 2-0. Uh, I, I thought that one could have gone either way. I'm surprised you guys didn't end up winning uh, more games in the group stage, though. I did think uh, they probably had that same problem on Sad Boys, where they just kind of threw together the stack, I was thinking, and you guys might be able to take some games off of them because of that. But uh, you, I think you just, uh, with a little bit of practice, I'm sure you guys would have done a little bit better instead of this tournament, I think. Oh, maybe in the future, maybe in the future. Maybe we'll play together for longer than a month, but that's that's hard to say because we're all in it. Oh, and uh, second last question before I get to the spicy one. Uh, DPC, do you guys have any plans for that one? Um, I think so. I think we'll probably keep most of the same players around for DPC. Not sure yet, though. It can never really be sure. There's a lot of spots, right, in the NA region available for teams, right? So I, I, if you guys can, it'd be worth it, most likely. How many slots are there? I'm actually not uh, that Eight Division One and eight Division Two. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe we can have one of those. All right. <laughs> and uh, now the, the spicy question, which I was hoping that you'd have a camera on. I told you to find your old jersey. This actually isn't your uh, introduction to competitive Dota. A number of years ago, you were on a lesser known team team yp can you share some details about that one i'm not sure how much trouble i'm gonna get in for even bringing this one up oh dude what i'm pretty sure the sponsor got banned from all valve oh events, okay never mind don't bring it up don't bring it up if it's banned from all valve I'm, I'm just looking out for you but <laughs> yeah uh that's a you yikes i had your... no idea yeah it was, like, it was a your... good ride yeah it was a good ride uh you can talk about your time on the team though i'm sure um made somehow got a lucky win into one land and then disbanded within three months not not that big of a deal yeah. just a small thing typical Still, na uh, like you say 
So the jersey is an any Dota relic, in my opinion, if uh, I <laughs> ever get a chance to see that. Does it just say YP on it? It just says YP. They didn't even bother to slap our names on the back. Uh, <laughs> discount jersey but uh thank you for hopping on i'm looking forward to you guys playing together potentially in dpc i'm sure you'll be able to snag top eight if you could uh get into this one i mean it's a uh, top eight for north america and then a tier two division as well yep i mean you guys had a pretty good run yeah cool uh we'll try our best to get into that and thanks for having having yeah, me and casting our games yeah before you go is there any shout outs you want to give anyone you want to say thank you to say hello to uh shout out to my teammates for playing some good dota even though we got zero two did our best uh you got zero two by thunder predator keep your heads up you know this team yeah. is pretty incredible <laughs> they are one of the best teams in uh the region so shout out to mjz dota yeah seriously good, good player very good player all right. Thank you so much for uh, coming in for the interview, Monster. You enjoy the rest of your day. Probably go experiment with the patch now that you don't have scrims. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you, guys. All See right. you around. Take care. You. All right. Neff, we did it. We've made it through another day here on the BTS Pro Series Season 4 Americas, but we've got more Dota to come. Two more days remain. We have the upper bracket finals tomorrow between uh, Sad Boys and Four Zoomers, also known as Four Boomers versus Four Zoomers, and then Beast Coast versus Thunder Predator for the lower bracket elimination series, and then we have the last day semifinals and grand finals. It is sure going to be a blast. All four teams remaining are absolute beasts, no pun intended, but guess what? You want know something very very interesting these are Everywhere. all four teams from the top four of the group stage just interesting it's it's who would have guessed it's very <laughs> rare i think in tournaments that you don't have like a top you know team like somehow blunder their way out of a tournament um yeah. but uh here we are the top four from the group stage beast coast four zoomers sad boys thunder predator all still remain and they're gonna be fighting for the victory to, to for a first place here at the bts pro series but uh, that's going to do it. Neff, any final words for the viewers before we call tonight? Uh, thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you to everybody for joining us today. Um, there's a little bit of a delay uh, because Thunder Predator is playing nonstop games. These guys don't rest. Uh, it was pretty fun. Unfortunately, we do see the open qualifier team from NA drop. I'd love to see them uh, get a little bit further. But you know, with a little bit more time, maybe we'll see a performance out of them from DPC like we talked about. Absolutely. All right. Well, that being said, big shout out to Monster. Thank you guys so much for keeping us energized all day long and making it through the tournament because it has been a hell of a tournament and a lot of fun. We are enjoying every moment and uh, we will be back tomorrow. Same place, same time on the BTS Pro Series Season 4. We'll see you all then. Have a good night.